about sir's designation sir is currently working as an associate professor at department of food engineering and technology tezpur university assam india uh, sir is handling administrative responsibilities that includes uh, deputy director of food quality control laboratory which is naba accredited laboratory tezpur university assam and sir's educational qualification is phd in food engineering and technology at tezpur, tezpur university area of specialization is food packaging food processing waste utilization extraction of bioactive compounds uh, talking about research and professional experience sir has vast experience that is that includes 16 plus years uh, sir is current, currently work, working as an associate professor at assam university and uh, earlier he was working as an assistant professor at the same university before that lecturer at uh, jaipur national university and assistant professor at ksk college bid Uh, so far sir has uh, given 10 plus invited talks at different uh, places and uh, 35 papers has been published by him and uh, so far three books has been published by sir and six chapters has been published uh, sir has one patent on his name and uh, two research projects uh, students successfully guided includes 20 mtech students and six phd students sir is currently committee member of uh, vice president of association of food scientist and technologist for 2021-22 and convener of 27th eco fest held at tezpur assam thank you so much sir um, you have accepted this uh, invitation and you are here with us um, so shall we continue sir? very hearty welcome sir accept yeah. the invitation and uh, uh, your knowledge will be very helpful to all our participants and uh, as per <laughs> when we see the biota so you can see that the you have started from our own city and right now you are uh, in the central university so your achievement is uh, really very uh, ex- uh, appreciable sir so heart, uh, so i am uh, i welcome you to this uh, fdb thank you uh, thank you so much uh, thank you uh, dr krishma for uh, introducing me and uh, sir for udachan sir for inviting me uh, it is nice to see my senior uh, with me and uh, all the known faces as i am uh, from uh, maharashtra only and uh, delivering this lecture from assam so very interesting for me also to interact with you all uh, so shall i start my presentation yes sir yeah. yes Sir, is full screen visible? It's, it's visible, sir. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, so uh, very good morning to all the participants. Uh, all are the most of you all faculty members and uh, working in this area. Uh, so, I shall try to focus uh, in this. Uh, faculty development program which is recent trends in food processing and preservation technology so packaging is also one of the important aspects when we consider uh, food packaging or uh, as a processing or preservation because uh, packaging is also helpful for preserving the food material for a long time so i am currently working uh, as introduced tejpur university this is a central university in assam and uh, i am working here uh, since last around 12 year uh, so and uh, before going for that title i i will uh, explain uh, brief about the packaging and uh, then uh, advances including biodegradable packaging advances which are uh, there and uh, what are the research that is carried out in our laboratory by considering the biodegradability as well as sustainable food packaging so when we consider about the packaging or introduction about packaging as i can say today's packaging is very essential part and it is a pervasive and very essential to all the aspects of food processing or food preservation we can say and without packaging material handling would be very messy 
insufficient and costly exercise. We cannot think handling the food packaging material or food material without any packaging. It will uh, increase the cost as well as very difficult to handle the systems of handling the food as well as transportation. And packaging sector represent about 2% of the gross national, uh, just a minute. So the packaging sector represent about 2% of the gross national product in development country. So this is also one of the important aspects that we should uh, consider. And packaging lies at the very heart of the modern food industry. And uh, very few foods are sold unpacked. So that is very essential part of uh, food industry. We can, and consumer also prefer to go for a packed food by considering the safety aspects and in this COVID things, it is also expected that packed food are safe for consumption. And food packaging is an integral component of food industry and help to store food and beverages in hygienic manner. So uh, if we are considering the handling aspect, hygiene aspect, packaging is one of the important part. And uh, good packaging prevent waste also and ensure that food retain its desired quality throughout its shelf life. So that is important aspects when we are uh, wanted to store the food for a long time, the package should prevent the waste and that help the package because loose product we cannot store for a long time and ultimately the package will be helpful. Uh, packaging definition, maybe you know all, uh, but for those who are new, the packaging is an integral component of the food sector. And we can say food packaging is a com combination of art, science and technology because uh, it is not only technology to be used because uh, the appearance and that science is very important to understand when, when we are packing something or you making or developing some package for a food item. So enclosing a product for achieving safe transportation and distribution of the product in wholesale condition to the user at a less price. So our aim is to design the package, the artful package we can say, have a good quality and they can protect our food. And also they can achieve the safe transportation and distribution of the product in a, uh, in, with the user that with, with the less price. So it should not increase the cost very, very high. Package ultimately, they will add the cost, but if we are considering the shelf life uh, and uh, the handling aspects, so ultimately the price will get compensated and uh, that will be useful. And uh, packaging is techno economic function arrived at a minimizing cost of delivery while maximizing sales and also satisfy consumer express and unexpressed desire. So if, when we are considering the cost, it should minimize the cost package should not increase the cost of uh, miss 10 rupees product one cannot buy at a 20 rupees so that should minimize the cost of delivery and also maximize the sales maximize sales means the package should itself can maximize the sale by introduced by uh, you can say marketing by themselves or presenting the product to the consumer and we need to satisfy consumer desires they might have expresses or unexpressed, but we should think, take a feedback and accordingly design. So that's why a package is also called an art of presenting the product because it is art, not only to hold the content and keep it for a long time. It is to art, how artfully we are presenting the product to the consumer so that they, they should like it. So according to the basic levels, there are a few type of uh, packaging levels are generally considered primary, secondary, tertiary. So primary packaging means our glass bottles or tetra pack or any pouch that is called the primary, which is in contact with the food material. When we stored many packaging in a combination that is called secondary packaging. So that will uh, easy to handle individual container, sometimes not useful. Then we can move towards the tertiary packaging where transportation uh, is get easy, lots of secondary packaging we can handle in a, in a better way. 
so these are some functions of packaging uh, like containment protection preservation convenience and promotion or communication that is basic uh, our food material should provide the containment that is basic means they should be hold the product means ketchup they should hold juice they should hold that is easy or that should be the basic part okay so that as i am discussing it is providing the convenience handling is easy but it should also protect protection means uh, there may be the mechanical damage there may be the uh, some environmental aspects so package uh, sufficient to hold to protect inside whatever the contents are there and we should uh, also like you can see in this picture the egg tray should be uh, is used so that eggs should not damage because of some vibration or anything and uh, preservation is also there as i told package extend the shelf life normal shelf life and package shelf life ultimately enhance because they have a barrier property they will not allow oxygen they will not water vapor to entertain and that's why it will help to preserve the food and uh, th that's why you can say shelf life is increased these are the basic aspects and convenience and communication is not a basic requirement but consumer want that convenience means you want the pouch which can be reseal or, uh, uh, or hold properly you can see this some of the pictures if it is a, a heavy weight you can have a container that can hold easily uh, you can have a, some handle to use it as well as uh, easy sealing and easy opening capacity so these are the part of convenience promotion is uh, like many package don't required marketing they itself can attract the consumer uh, you know the example of uh, kids they like the kinder joy and all because uh, that they promote the product they attract the consumer so and also com communicate communicate means what is inside how to use it and uh, many more labeling information we can see so just i am briefing this now considering the uh, market strategy or market packaging industry in india the uh, indian package market values about uh, usd of 62.81 billion in 2020 and it is expected to increase to uh, 258 around billion by 2026 so there is a registering a cagr that is compound animal growth rate of around 26 or 27 percent uh, in upcoming years and also uh, in india if we are considering according to the care rating uh, the uh, india more than 94 percent of the paper produce in the country is used for packaging purpose only means whatever the paper is manufactured in india around 50 percent is for packaging industry so we can ex uh, things about the how it is very essential and uh, main component okay and also there are many uh, pharmaceuticals, food industry and beverage industry, which generally holds the, uh, the share of the packaging material, uh, if we are considering the overall. However, uh, other businesses, transportation, they are using the uh, paper-based cartoons and all that is uh, used. So, uh, if I can highlight uh, uh, that according to the recent data, around 7 rupees 780 million in 2020, 2020 and uh, it is increased from 530 million in 2016 so the market size or uh, as associated with the food industry that is that can be understood uh, and uh, according to the indian institute of packaging the packaging consumption in india has increased by 200 percent in the past decade so Earlier, we are using 4.3 kg per person per, per annum packaging material. Now it is around uh, 8.6 kg per person per annum. So consumption is also, consumption not we are using, that is utilization of the packaging material is increased uh, uh, by the uh, India Indian market also. And also why it is happened in India, the grocery market uh, is a traditional retail industry and everyone uh, earlier, you, when uh, past 10 20 years we used to go into the shops and uh, buy many loose things including oil 
uh, rice, whatever. But now everything is getting in a, a pack. And uh, in case of online or retail marketing, now everything is packed. So packaging has taken the market in a grocery market also. Now only we can say fruits and vegetables. They they have not entered in a that way in India, but that is also packed in a many many cities. Also, uh, like food delivery services in India, like Big Basket, uh, Grofers, Tomato, Swiggy, Scooties, they also increase the rapid uh, registering uh, increase in sale of their uh, things. So these are some database like Tomato, Swiggy, how they capture the market. And uh, as per one data in financial year 2018, Swiggy and Zomato, uh, their revenue is around uh, 4.42 billion and 4.66 billion. So, large amount of business. And uh, how Zomato and Swiggy works, other than that, packaging is one of the aspects for them to deliver the product from the some restaurant to the home. So, this is happen or possible because of the packaging. And uh, these are some uh, basic things. There are packaging materials. So we, we are calling is at a basic packaging material. If it is in direct contact with the food material or hold the food material. And auxiliary packaging, those who are decorate or uh, maybe we can say label or whatever. But basically, the packaging material are four types. Paper and paper-based packaging material, metal packaging material, glass packaging material and plastic packaging material uh, these are four basics and uh, sometimes we are using in combination uh, like uh, paper with a plastic paper with a metal or metal with a plastic whatever so like tetra pack some laminated pouches they are the some examples uh, that we are using so that are the advances that happen along with the basic packaging material now, uh, if we are talking about some advances in a food packaging, uh, before going for uh, any more detail, just uh, you all may aware that FSSI have a packaging regulation. It is in 2011, after Food Safety and uh, Standard Act, uh, they have introduced Food Safety and Standard Packaging and regu re Regulation, Labeling Regulation in 2011, which is now uh, split into the two uh, standards so one is a food safety and standard packaging regulation 2018 so this regulation uh, if you go through it it highlights the requirement of the packaging standards for packaging material to be utilized in a food industry uh, etc however uh, when we discuss about uh, recently like uh, 2020 they have uh, introduce food safety and standard labeling and display regulation 2020 uh, these are this regulation is a draft regulation they might be working on it so some changes are suggested on labeling and uh, the timeline was given up to 2021 and i think uh, so that anyone can uh, suggest some changes and uh, in our however regulations are available in the uh, their website so what are new changes that i want to highlight uh, they may they may not be uh, miss notified yet but it may be accepted so uh, we know that traffic signal on the food uh, sorry in a in a while vehicle is running so there is a red orange as well as yellow so this traffic light food labeling are also utilized and why it is we are considering red is a danger orange is moderately high and green is safe so by considering this the labeling requirement whatever the component or uh, that nutrients are there it will be highlighted with a color like you can see the fat and saturates is around in a safe level sugar is high so in that way one can highlight so that consumer can uh, uh, if there is a more red 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 so consumer will think oh this is somewhat high in uh, all the aspects so acceptability and uh, easy understanding otherwise sometimes what happens there is a lot of nutritional data and uh, health health benefits whatever so consumer don't understand because they uh, they are not aware about the that 
the percentage or whatever uh, or any any common people may not be uh, able to think so that's this color will help one to uh, understand what is high if uh, I, I am a sugar patient one of sugar patients so they will uh, not prefer the such type of product or uh, th some someone don't want uh, salt so in accordingly uh, we can plan and uh, these are also logo that are also decided i think to change one is a green uh, currently we are uh, looking for one uh, square and a green circle and one is a red so green means vegetarian and red means non vegetarian so now uh, sometime because of a printing mistake or a, a color there is a sometime very uh, difficult to judge whether it is veg or non veg so that's why it is suggested to use a triangle in place of a red circle so this new logo is proposed for non vegetarian atom to easy identification of the uh, that uh, product also uh, every package of food material sold in retail but which is not meant for human consumption you know that uh, we are getting uh, puja water ghee for diya oil for puja whatever so that is not that much you can say purified or useful for consumption but earlier to that other than fssi registration uh, or licensing there was no any other symbol but now uh, this this will help us to identify whether it is not for human consumption but for other purpose but the, as it is a food product it will um, got the license in that also every package of fortified food shall carry the word fortified with name of the like fortified with the calcium fortified with iodine whatever so and logo on the label it may also be carry a tagline sampurna poshan swasth jeevan so in this aspects uh, uh, this is fortification and uh, every package of certified organic food as per the regulation which is uh, established in 2017 food safety and standard organic food regulations shall carry the logo written like this type of logo with jaivik bharat so these are some uh, in indian prospective fssi you know uh, some initiative about the labeling and considering the packaging i i thought i should uh, highlight this now when we are considering the advances in food uh, packaging so food packaging technology is a uh, uh, continuously evolving in response to the growing challenge in a modern society and uh, now consumer want more other than only basic packaging because of uh, many aspects so uh, because again change in consumer preference have led to innovation and development in a new packaging technologies uh, some examples are active and intelligent packaging systems so these are our two innovative branches of packaging field and there are many developments uh, that occur just i will highlight uh, active packaging uh, like it can be used to uh, remove some unwanted product uh, compound from the package or sometimes we can add some desirable compound and prevent the microbial growth etc so active packaging means something additionally Uh, that is called the subsidiary constituents have been deliberately included or either the packaging material in the head or packaging head space to enhance the performance of the package system so if we want to increase the shelf life of package material further uh, and to avoid some contamination spoilage we can add some active compound inside that that is nothing but the active packaging okay so active packaging techniques uh, are used for preservation improving quality and safety of a food so uh, there are different types of active systems are used we can use absorbing system uh, it is also called scavenging like we don't want oxygen we can remove it we don't want carbon dioxide we don't want ethylene we don't want excessive water or some uh, taint or specific odor so we can remove it that is called absorbing system means some active compound can absorb it and uh, can separate it another is releasing system uh, like emit we can add some uh, things to change the environment and there are uh, some other system also like 
सेल्फ हीटिंग सेल्फ कूलिंग एक्सेट्रा ओके सो इन एक्टिव पैकेजिंग जनरली वी यूज सैचेज एंड पैड विच कैन बी एडेड एंड दैट कैन परफॉर्म द रोल्स सो दिस इज अस्टम ऑफ एक्टिव पैकेजिंग अवर फूड मटेरियल इज इन साइड एंड दे आर कोटेड विथ दैट एक्टिव लेयर एंड दैट एक्टिव लेयर मे कंटेन सम इसेंशियल कंपाउंड विच कैन रिलीज सिस्टम लाइक Uh, sometime we want uh, release carbon dioxide antioxidant or sometime we we can use scavenging system means if we don't want something we can remove in that way but this is a very detailed study uh, if uh, we can see this for a pictorial view i can show this is a oxygen absorber so we can find some saches of oxygen absorber may contain iron powder or some enzymatic oxygen absorber uh, can be used uh, or sometime uh, for liquid food oxygen absorbing material are also used uh, like layers of packaging and uh, that can also be utilized oxygen scavenging layer also one can uh, use the ethylene absorber ethylene is good if we want ripening but if we pack the product ethylene will accumulate in a generally problem with the fresh commodities they are stored in modified atmospheric packaging or whatever so what happen uh, more ethylene can accelerate the rate of uh, ripening and spoilage can occur easily that's why one can go for a ethylene scavenger so less ethylene will be uh, released and that can help to increase the or delay the ripening process and shelf life can be increased sometime we can use ethanol emitter also so different concept ethanol is everyone is know that is the antimicrobial agent so uh, there are different systems compartment can be used having ethylene in a in a some absorbent that can be released time to time and uh, can create the antimicrobial uh, system around the food material okay so intelligent packaging is slightly different it is not protecting the food we can say but they are communicating with the customer means uh, they can tell it is a uh, spoil or uh, the seal was open or in that way okay so this they can monitor certain aspect and report or inform to the consumer like uh, there are different possible tools uh, which can be uh, helpful for uh, our system just i will show some pictures so there are time temperature indicator uh quality indicator means quality is good or not uh, gas concentration indicator and uh, some convenience type like uh, preparation uh, like if we want to go for cooking so they can tell it is okay now uh, we can uh, it is properly cook or uh, if some packages are tempered or or uh, taped so that can be also judged or indicated by the indicators these are some examples uh, of some industry they are use ripe sensor which can change the color of this indicator by uh, if it is get crisp firm juicy so according to the uh, that ripening that color will change so nothing but they will uh, react with the volatile compound and uh, that color can change this is a, a heat step time temperature monitor so whenever there is a increase in te temperature with respect to time we can say uh, there is a substrate and enzyme in a different compartment they can react and the color will form so orange color show it is like uh, not good or uh, danger so in that way uh, these are used in case of gas concentration indicator if we want aerobic condition and uh, there is a oxygen present so it can show the uh, like changes in the color so if oxygen is uh, very uh, less it will be blue color if oxygen uh, it is open then uh, it will be uh, get uh, pink according to the vice versa the changes can be possible and also this is a thermochromic ink the ink which sensitive to the temperature whenever there is a change in temperature we can encounter any that uh, we can think that color will appear 
now uh, that drink now things can be visible or we can feel by looking into it these are some innovative concepts or advances in the food packaging so next i will uh, discuss about some advancement in a biodegradable food packaging so whenever we call biodegradable so there are sometimes two terms like bio based packaging and uh, biopolymer also so bio based packaging material are by definition made from renewable raw material and uh, can be classified according to their origin and method of production so source is bio based but uh, we cannot say all bio based product are biodegradable however biopolymers or biodegradable polymer may be the polymer that are degradable by the enzymatic action of the microbes and uh, we want this the package should be biodegradable if uh, we can sustain all the important uh, qualities in the packaging material so based on the research a biopolymer based packaging material may be divided into three main groups based on their origin and production so these groups as i can't say uh, from this group 1 is the polymer which are directly extracted or removed from the biomass biomass means uh, we can extract polysaccharide like starch cellulose protein uh, casein gluten etc from uh, some the natural sources and that can be utilized for the making packaging film or material group 2 generally contain the polymeric material which are synthesized by a classical polymerization and uh, such as like uh, aliphatic aromatic copolymers uh, most popularly polylactic lactides and uh, that's using renewable bio based monomers such as polylactic acid oil based monomer like poly, uh, poly carlactones etc and uh, group 3 contain the that produced by the microorganism or genetically modified bacteria constitute this group so just you can say uh, under synthetic biopolymer derived from the monomers of uh, that that contain a polylactic acid and polybutyric succinate and polyethylene adipate so among this polylactic acid is most popularly utilized in as a synthetic polyester and uh, microbial we can uh, go for uh, most xanthan gum bad bacterial cellulose alginate and uh, these are some that is used as a microbial biopolymers and natural biopolymers like as i told pectin polysaccharides we can extract from uh, plant sources animal sources and can be utilized uh, for uh, further use uh, now just brief polysaccharides you know the natural biopolymer starch is uh, most cost effective polysaccharide and uh, can be utilized from the different sources from uh, cellulose is also uh, abundantly naturally occurring polymer among these cellulose and hemicellulose are most popularly used in a paper making industry uh, by removing the lignin from the plant or natural sources and uh, have a fiber forming property that's why they are most popularly utilized as a natural biopolymer cytosan is uh, another polysaccharides uh, it is most commonly utilized in a research if you will search so uh, it is uh, cytin is one of the most abundantly polysaccharide produced in the nature and uh, mostly from the exoskeleton of uh, many uh, you can say cell walls of insect cuticles and uh, that is or marine sources this uh, this is very easily from this uh, that can be adopted or extracted and some gums are there alginate carrageenan agar pectins pectins can also be considered under the gum category so these are natural biopolymers uh, in case of protein if, if we thinks so there are different proteins like uh, gelatin gluten jn soya protein whey protein so they can also be extracted and utilized in the protein things okay. 
so uh, sometimes protein based uh, biodegradable polymer may have an expanding range of uh, potential application in a food and non food packaging uh, it is used in many uh, surgery also or uh, tissue engineering but uh, in making the film and coating protein uh, are also helpful because sometimes uh, only polysaccharides are not good in property so if we mix with the protein they they, they can have the some we can achieve a desired property that's why protein based biopolymer can be used for a polymer reinforcement along with other material or non protein based material to achieve the uh, desired quality in in that packaging material uh, some synthetic uh, polymers are also there like polylactic acid uh that can be uh utilized so i'm not telling much detail but this is synthetic uh, biopolymer uh that is uh, because polymerization of lactic acid are used for making this and this is show a uh, good demand and a good property if we compare with the uh, synthetic polymer also biodegradable and easily uh, we can use it as a like polymer then uh, polyhydroxy alkanoids these are uh, used in a, as a microbial biopolymer uh, and that is synthesized and uh, that can also be used uh, for a poly polymerization purpose or for packaging purpose these are the some list of the companies which manufacture biodegradable film based on the starch pla pla starch base etc so we can just uh, you can go through this company sometime if you want to detail about that. Uh, most popularly, the application of this biofilm made from the, uh, the sources, biodegradable sources, are used in the modified atmospheric packaging. So, we all know that modification means nothing but the uh, we are using and uh, O2 con oxygen concentration generally we used to reduce and increase the carbon dioxide concentration so that overall metabolic process can be controlled and extend the shelf life of the commodity. If we consider about the fresh fruits and vegetables, so the atmospheric oxygen from 21% we used to reduce up to 3% uh, or below that depend upon the type of product. Okay. And sometimes we don't want oxygen also if uh, that is a non-respiring product like bakery atoms and all so uh, it is an uh, economical simple technique for extending the shelf life with the uh, preserving quality of fruits and vegetables most popularly so if we uh, you can see these are some of the biodegradable material they are used in a uh, modified atmospheric packaging of uh, some commodities like uh, uh, cherries, tomatoes, fruits and vegetables, mushroom, etc. And most popularly, polylactic acids along with paper or other films are used. Okay. Or, but uh, uh, polysaccharide based uh, films are not that much uh, useful in case of modified atmospheric packaging by considering the their property. But polylactic acid that is a synthetic but uh, that cannot be easily utilized. Uh, now, application of biopolymer in smart food packaging, as I told, uh, active packaging and intelligent packaging are two aspects. They are considering advances, which are used for protection and preservation, that is called active packaging. And for communication, if it is used, that is called the intelligent packaging. Now, how the biopolymer is helpful? So, what happens uh, whenever we are using the active ingredient or active polymer? You can see the active compounds are uh, utilized in this layer as well as active polymer which can be directly applied on the food material. So what happen? Uh, active compounds can be easily entrapped in a, our biodegradable polymer base from the uh, many polysaccharide or starch base or, uh, or protein base. So they can easily hold this bio that active compound and we can directly wrap on the food material so it will be in contact with food material as it is uh, non-toxic and can also prevent the uh, contamination or uh, microbial or any and they can have a antimicrobial role and so 
in that way biopolymers can be utilized so these are some information about the same so in some example you can see the ph responsive colorimetric indicator film are used in a various application like we can use natural pigments or natural polymer carriers for uh, making such type of the active film or indicative film that is intelligent film like we can use uh, anthocyanin and uh, some uh, chlorophyll curcumin and uh, that property of that pigment they may have a ph sensitivity solubility stability color stability so that can be utilized uh, for a, a detection purpose we, they, they may have a antioxidant anti inflammatory or many more role so what have, what we can do we can use this natural pigments can entrap in a polysaccharide protein based or lipid based material okay and that can be applied on the food material so there and also we can check the properties so this will help to sometime if there is a some changes the pigment color will change and can uh, tell us uh, like what is happening uh, in that system so this is one of the important aspects uh, that natural polymer can be utilized you can see this is a simple uh, uh, source like we can use a source of uh, natural polymer carrier uh, maybe protein carbohydrate or uh, some animal source can also be utilized okay so this natural polymer carrier we can make a solution with this and uh, that uh, that is you can say fill forming solution which can be used or coating solution we can utilize and we can use natural pigment from the any sources uh, that is naturally available maybe flower flower from uh, some waste material and can be incorporated and uh, obviously we need to study the properties we need to cast the film uh, understand their uh, performance and then we can apply on the food material so this is all uh, practically possible uh, when we are considering the advances in a biodegradable packaging so uh, obviously there is a antimicrobial biopolymer film are also important uh, like when we are using the uh, such type of the polymeric film so most essentially uh, i can highlight clove paper cinnamon coffee and other that that type of the ingredients are used in the this biodegradable film or biopolymer film which have an antimicrobial property uh, as i explain here we can instead of this pigment we can add active compound from the natural source maybe uh, clove oil or ginger extract or uh, some extract and that can have a antimicrobial role also so this is uh, uh, this is possible and that is uh, as it is from natural sources non toxic and we can implement easily simply antimicrobial uh, this film can be made by incorporating uh, we can add uh, some uh, extract from lemon or any any sources before that uh, application we need to study the antimicrobial activity how the zone of inhibition they can make or we can target some microorganism then we can apply so we can uh, see that it is easily uh, protected for long time so we can use in a sweets cut fruits meat etc another advantage or uh, is, uh, that advancement in the biodegradable packaging is uh, use of uh, nanoparticles or nano material in the food system okay so uh, these material are combined with the polymer help to give better barrier and antimicrobial property nanoparticle shows a mostly used to improve the property uh, the tensile strength or uh, barrier property we can see so biological micromolecules like uh, polysaccharides algal polysaccharide cytosine gelatin and other like starch are explored for developing eco friendly packaging alternative by using such techniques and uh, so that nanoparticles that can be used as a filler in the nano range are explored for on this type of the biopolymer and they improve overall property of the polymer matrix by improving their barrier property 
to oxygen, water vapor, and increase stability mechanical strain. We want very much oxygen barrier property as well as water barrier property and good strength. So it it is possible because natural polymer don't give that much strength and uh, polymer. So nanoparticle addition is very 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 useful. So we can use uh, silver nanoparticle, zinc oxide nanoparticle, titanium, titanium oxide nanoparticle, copper nanoparticle, nano silica, some organic uh, nanoparticles also like starch, uh, nano scale, cellulose, nano clay, etc. Means there are more applications and uh, you may find uh, many review and research paper by utilizing this nanoparticle in the our biodegradable film. So this is a simple how uh, nano composite films are made. We need to synthesize a nanoparticle by uh, top down method or bottom up method. Any method we can adopt, the nanoparticle can get ready and uh, we can mix the nanofiber with our polymer matrix like we mix pigment, glow, etc. Add a plasticizer and development of a nano composite film is very easy uh, and can have a good property. You can see through this picture, this uh, film, this is A, uh, that is called the neat film. We don't have any, any, comp any, any things. So the gases can easily pass through the film and uh, that affects the barrier property and uh, we cannot store food for long time. Uh, some macro material or a micro composite film, they can uh, reduce barrier property slightly. You can see the penetration of gases can take some time. But in case of uh, nano composite film, it will help to uh, this uh, migration of the uh, particles is very very difficult and uh, it improve the property of uh, that things so uh, these are some of the uh, examples of uh, nanomaterial and uh, nanofillers that can be applied uh, to the nanofillers or biopolymer and we can uh, make the pill having the we can nanoparticles are used in a synthetic and natural polymer but if we are considering of biopolymer, uh, it is also acceptable and uh, improve the mechanical property as well as uh, enhance the water vapor and oxygen permeability uh, so that uh, we can store the food uh, effectively. Now some sustainable approaches in food packaging. So these are the advances uh, we can uh, add in packaging system. Uh, is there any such, some questions, sir? Uh, I, I can't, or should I take it later? There are two questions in the chat box. Okay, okay. Just I am actually uh, Dr. Darmalingam from but. So I only ask this question, sir. So generally, we play with the nanoparticles at the time. Barrier properties are good, but we have to sacrifice mechanical properties in terms of density strength and percentage elongation. Am I correct, sir? So, but I still, we everybody struggles and all researchers throughout the world to how to get you know optimum of, optimum of both properties. So if you can you know explain and you know if you have you know uh, if you explain in this aspect, it will be good, sir, for our for this uh, in this faculty development program. Thank you, sir. Okay, okay. Uh, uh, actually, the most of the studies show that uh, it helped to increase the uh, property of the mechanical property as well as barrier property uh, when we use nanoparticle because uh, whenever we use only polymeric material and uh, we are also facing problem when uh, because of the shelf life of the our packaging material also is problem. Uh, when we are uh, making only from the naturally polymeric material. But this biopolymer, when uh, nanoparticles are used, they ultimately uh, enhance the property by many, many fold. Now, uh, the use of nanoparticles uh, in a proper way uh, and which form we are using uh, is 
is most important uh, as a nano filler and how we are mixing it and how we are forming the film uh, because whenever we go for a casting method of any filmmaking the property will not achieve in a bad way so it is desirable uh, to improve the property uh, we can go for a extrusion uh, or uh, that type of the techniques like we use in a synthetic polymeric material so uh, that i can suggest to go for uh, extrusion method uh, they they can have a good polymerization and uh, hopefully they can increase but ultimately uh, if we are using synthetic comparatively it will not that much uh, uh, comparable obviously uh, as far as the stability of the nanoparticles are concerned they are less, less stable uh, compared to micro particles and how do we uh, you know address these issues and make into a, a good stable nanoparticles uh, for packaging uh, yes sir actually good sir but uh, I have also not gone through that detail uh, yeah it is uh, really interesting to find out this finding of how the stability can be uh, enhanced so I think the uh, method of our uh, mixing with the our biopolymer and casting film uh, may be uh, maybe one of the aspects uh, that can be studied but uh, st I think stability will be good if we are using our uh, nanoparticle comparative to the uh, macro particle I have not come to the comparative study of this but uh, from literature I can say that uh, uh, as I know, stability is good, sir. I don't know in what aspect stability uh, you are talking. Uh, can you please expand? Uh, so, for example, the thermostability, as far as the thermostabilities are concerned, uh, okay. when we go with uh, the uh, higher, uh, uh, you know, temperatures, so maybe sometimes the stability will decrease. That's what I. Oh, okay, I okay, okay, so okay, sir. Okay. Uh, yeah, some of the materials. Okay. And sustainability okay. even for a longer duration of time and leaching properties is always uh, the metals what we are using. So there could be a chance of leaching into the food and uh, so that may increase the metal concentration uh, in the food. Sometimes maybe that also a, a possible, uh, you know, uh, conditions what we will be talking when we use a nanoparticle. So how do you address uh, this issue, sir? Okay, okay, sir, good. So, uh, as I know that uh, nanoparticles uh, improve the property, but ob obviously the the leaching or uh, you can say uh, absorption or leaching out of the nanoparticle and uh, that that may disintegrate the property of the polymer matrix. Uh, like your in normal plastics also or glass bottle also, uh, such type of the if long time storage if matrix is not proper that may affect it. So I think uh, structurally uh, we need to think about it and uh, uh, the more focus on the metrology uh, will be needed uh, from the from the research point of view and uh, that study can be done on a leaching property. So I can highlight uh, that much uh, from uh, from what my interest that. Uh, awareness about uh, nanomaterial hope sir uh, thank you very much sir yeah yeah thank you uh, when we considering the sustainable approaches in food packaging uh, like whatever we discuss uh, is a natural polymer and uh, when sustainability is concerned so packaging is an essential element of uh, response to address key challenges of sustainable food consumption uh, on the international sense uh, or uh, which is about the minimizing the environmental footprint of packaged food. So uh, there is an uh, innovative sustainable packaging aim to address food waste and uh, loss reduction by preserving food quality. So uh, like we can use from the natural source, we can use from any source, but sustainability of that packaging material uh, is very much important. So to address this aspect, uh, some examples are there which many organizations or, or industries, they are trying to uh, utilize uh, sustainability in their packaging sector by, uh, by so that 
uh, they can help in in that manner so kfc compostable cup you may have idea and some more examples are there which are related that is a uh, butter better means uh, we can use the that wooden type environmental friendly uh, baskets so that uh, that cannot be wasted and we can utilize the same for uh, uh, our purpose of packaging uh, by considering the uh, food processing waste food loss are uh, referred to decrease in uh, edible food mass uh, through the part of the supply chain that specifically led to the edible food for human consumption and food loss are considered as a, a major problem and uh, we can see through this uh, graphical uh, orientation like there is a agriculture production is uh, and how much amount of the food waste is are there and uh, many food waste are only the edible part so concern are there to uh, utilize the food waste or also to avoid or reduce the such type of the waste reduction so how we can relate uh, some of this waste to the packaging so food processing waste are there and uh, there are different approaches are utilized to address this uh, food waste and management aspects so if we consider the waste management hierarchy so we should try to reduce the waste first that is a possible extent and then we can try to reuse it and if possible uh, reuse it not possible then we can go for a recycle or compost and at last only the disposal so we should not think about disposal of any waste at an instant so to highlight this aspect in a food industry how would we can uh, there is a scope of utilization of uh, food packaging uh, development of this waste in a food packaging like uh, there is a peels of potato citrus fruits etc and there are many compounds as i told uh, that starch pectin cellulose protein and have a application or usability for a film formation or film making or uh, to make a composite film or that active agent can also be utilized so to address this is uh, some issues we have done some research in our lab for utilizing the food processing waste for development of the uh, biopolymeric film or biodegradable film so in uh, one of our study uh, we have utilized uh, potato peel and sweet lime pomace uh, we can go for extraction purpose but we try to utilize direct waste for developing the film so uh, we have grinded the peel sweet lime and uh, mix in a different proportion and film were formed uh, and uh, that application of the film was also studied on uh, some food product so here we try to utilize direct utilization of the waste of the food to the packaging another uh, in another study uh, we we approach and uh, chicken feather that is protein uh, where that is uh, extracted and we try to that chicken feather protein that is uh, uh, that can be utilized for making the film so no, we have, hello yeah we have used uh, this uh, protein uh, and uh, that pomelo fruit pectin and uh, we extracted the protein as well as the pectin from this both the raw material and uh, that can be utilized or that we utilize for developing the biodegradable or the film by using uh, that protein as well as the it is chicken feather protein that is keratin and pomelo peel pectin uh, in aspects so our aim is to utilize the waste uh, so in that way we try to do some study on this aspect uh, in another study we have utilized uh, direct transformation of muskmelon seed milk into the biodegradable film so the aspects was the uh, same uh, in which we tried to incorporate ultrasound treatment and uh, that powder or defatted powder uh, was utilized uh, for developing the biopolymeric film and uh, and their application was also studied and properties of that film was utilized 
Similarly, uh, we extracted uh, the protein as well as uh, pectin from the pumpkin industry or uh, that is seeds as well as the peel and uh, that protein and pectin uh, were utilized for uh, making the film effectively and uh, that can be approaches. So these are a similar study of uh, continuation of that. In, in, in another study, we directly utilize peel and uh, seeds and without extracting the protein and pectin and uh, we compared both the film how they, they are effective and how, how the properties are affected because of that and that uh, comparison is presented. Uh, again, as I told, uh, active components of the food are one of the essential uh, parts. So, uh, we utilize uh, in our lab microwave assisted uh, solvent free extraction and uh, it was used uh, whatever the residues after extraction of essential oil was left, uh, that residues also means we have utilized second time the waste. First waste we utilize for extraction of essential oil. The second waste we try to utilize for the uh, development of the uh, film from that uh, waste. Uh, however, we can add essential oil uh, for uh, in a control manner if we want to have an antimicrobial property or any other can be approaches. So this was uh, one of the study in which uh, the active film were developed by utilizing the uh, such sweet lime pomace residues from the industry. Uh, we also tried to develop uh, some biodegradable container for holding some beverages uh, through application of uh, some wax coating on it. So we, we use sweet lime pomace powder and uh, the container were formed by considering our input from the previous study. Though the container, uh, the strength was good, but uh, the barrier property or uh, holding to liquid is uh, not good. So we utilize the uh, bee wax and uh, we modified it uh, by using zinc acetate to increase the uh, water holding capacity. And uh, we found it uh, that warm water can hold and one can use like uh, for consumption of tea and etc for some time so around 10 minutes it, it was possible to hold it and uh, that was one of the uh, things that that can be utilized so modified bivax was useful uh, in that case which was coated inside the things however studies are more going on how the that uh, how much amount of the wax is come in contact with the food and etc that's why we use BVAX by considering the safety aspect. So this is our uh, one of the recent study uh, in which uh, we use sweet lime pill based biodegradable pill and uh, we try to incorporate sugarcane bagasse fiber uh, to improve the mechanical strength of the pill. So some of the study is uh, done and some are carried out uh, and going on on more aspects on the film properties, how they can be uh, improved by using the fibers. Uh, so this is all about uh, our laboratory studies that uh, we carried out or going on. These are some of the uh, things that can be used in an innovative design if we are considering the advances like uh, the that can be depend upon the consumer acceptability though it is used in the some premium class of packaging where one can utilize the package in a colorful or artful manner as i told packaging is uh, as an art so these are some of the art one can use this wooden wine case from the bird house etc so these are some examples of uh, how the, the innovations in a packaging is possible okay like uh, this uh, cheap can which bloom into a bowl after opening. So in that way, one can uh, enjoy and utilize this. These are some of the design innovations we can say uh, in the packaging aspects. There are many more. These are some of I am showing you. So uh, 
this is I have shown you butter better. Just uh, uh, open it and you can use the same. No need to worry about uh, the spreader. The lead of the uh, that uh, a, a, that cup can be utilized for uh, consumption as a spoon and uh, a squeezable container for uh, some liquid or beverages can also be one of the aspects that can be approached. So this is uh, all from my side. Uh, now, thank you so much. Just me, I, I could not able to view the full screen. Hello. Sir, yes, yes, ma'am. Very good presentation. Excellent. You have covered everything: innovation, novelty, uh, recent trends, coming, uh, coming up topics. Everything. Very, very nice presentation on biodegradable packaging, and your um, work is very interesting as well as um, very, uh, you know, motivating for us also to take that work because waste uh, from food industry. Uh, is you know huge so converting that into something yeah. which is very valuable will add to the circular economy also you said about you know sustainable packaging just with curiosity you know because that that's a very interesting topic again yet another so so in sustainable packaging are there studies carried out where people have actually calculated the sustainability score for each biodegradable packaging, considering all those criteria that are mentioned for sustainability score. So are there already such scores available, which can help like for scientists like us, you know, or the industries to utilize that particular biodegradable material for, for you know, packaging? Yeah, ma'am, thank you for uh, your kind words. Uh... Regarding score, ma'am, uh, I, I uh, according to the commodity wise, uh, I, I can't say now, but I will definitely search if there is some biodegradability score is available. Uh, however, many industry, those who are in a food also, so they try to utilize their waste uh, in a in a some other aspects, uh, maybe uh, for uh, byproduct utilization or in that way. So. Uh, there are focus on uh, packaging also uh, because what happened uh, mostly we uh, food technologies to whenever we are working we are trying to utilize it in a, some different way like uh, for extraction of uh, some bioactive compound in all that but uh, studies are going on uh, how we can utilize like 100% waste because when we go for extraction again there is an energy and uh, we uh, again there is a problem of sustainability so if suppose there is a waste and we, we could utilize that whole waste for some uh, valuable purpose so that type of the trials are going on and uh, that's why uh, i am also totally working on that aspect of sustainability uh, how we can use whole uh, waste of some industry to the uh, valuable product so that I can say uh, for score, definitely, ma'am, I, I will uh, try to add if uh, and contact and share with you. Uh, if yes, sir. You thank know. you. That will be very nice. And we, like I, I have only heard, but uh, I have heard for, you know, some of the processing technologies, like the novel processing technologies where they when you say this is a sustainable technology. So there they have calculated, but I did not, uh, you know, hear about also packaging, but that's a. Uh, you know, we scientists like us only we have to. So once you come across, please share with me. Yes, and once again, um, thank you so much for sharing all your insights with us. Uh, it was really very good uh, talk. I, I really got a lot of things to learn from you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, ma'am. So I can take some question uh, which I have not uh, gone through. Uh, one question is Sir, there. Shall uh, we discuss the questions? Yeah, yeah, please. Yes, sir. So there is a question that is, are there any chances of migration of additives in packaged product? If it is, what are the quantification methods? Uh, yeah, migration is uh, sometimes desirable also and uh, 
if we are using as a active ingredient uh, like as i told in case of biopolymer uh, we are adding the amount of uh, specific uh, compounds like uh, to the that packaging material and migration to the environment is desirable then we are utilizing it for a uh, effective purpose so uh, yes there is a migration possible uh, again if you don't want to go for migration then again we need to uh, utilize bilayer film uh, if that is only the purpose uh, however to measure the uh, that uh, migration rate there are methods available uh, migration means uh, simply you can measure how much amount of the uh, that compound or active material is in your packaging and with respect to time uh, you can measure uh like after 5 days 10 days as per the storage condition how much degradation uh, takes place in in that film in that way one can uh, get idea the migration how much takes place another way one can analyze the product also with uh, that particular compound and uh, that is possible uh, simply one can uh, if the compound if there is a, any biochemical method can be utilized for that particular compound or one can go for hplc or gcms if uh, that can be detectable okay ma'am okay sir thank you uh, there is another question can product properties uh, have any effect on bioplastic films or films properties uh, have any effect on packed food yeah of course uh, these are uh, both are interrelated the first of all whenever we are using the packaging material the property should be good like we want barrier property as well as mechanical strength is good but uh, some of the biopolymers they are uh, you can say uh, absorb water easily and uh, when they absorb the water that may affect their property and uh, then that will be not useful to utilize because if suppose we are wrapping some meat product which are rich in the uh, moisture content and if we apply biodegradable film obviously uh, many biodegradable film are absorb that water and uh, then only then that biodegradable film is disintegrate that is the one problem uh, we are also facing so there are some solution uh, compo com means uh, bi biopolymer or uh, multilayer film are utilized uh, having the they can sustain in that condition also and uh, obviously if polymer properties are good it will not affect the food material but if the biopolymer uh, is absorb the moisture and then they can interact with the food then obviously the packaging will be affected yes ma'am hope uh, it is satisfied uh, yes sir there is another question how we can improve the barrier properties of the bioplastic films uh, as i told there are uh, many methods uh, simply most of the studies nowadays carried out on the nanoparticle though i am not working on that line but nanoparticle are used to for the barrier property uh, but simply if we want to go for a barrier property uh, if that is a edible or non edible that are another aspect if it is non edible we can go with a, some fiber uh, like uh, maybe cotton fiber or some bagasses fiber that will help to improve the property uh, and mechanical strength uh, we are working on that so hopefully that fiber can hold the film in a better way and uh, give the best property that i can add here thank you the question is can we use horticultural waste for the same purpose uh, yes uh, why not because uh, any waste are uh, useful to the and if it is uh, from natural sources obviously we are using some sources uh, from uh, horticulture sections also so i think it is possible now actually whenever we making the film we should have the knowledge like what are the composition of the film and uh, whenever we are using it like it should have a good amount of the some polysaccharide or protein then only the film formation will be easy otherwise if we are using some horticulture product and they don't have any as i told uh, if i can use sugarcane fiber or uh, sugarcane i cannot make the film so i need to add some uh, uh, that 
biopolymer which have the film forming property so that understanding is needed so one can add and uh, utilize it uh, for for that purpose yes please yes sir which packaging material designed so far may be considered most inert with reference to interaction with food now actually all the packaging material like glass uh, glass is considered very good for uh, packaging because they don't interact with it uh, however metal is also acceptable and uh, this glass and metal having the good prop, uh, that if we are considering about the compatibility with the food obviously that's why paper are also polymers are also there some polymer having the uh, high sustainability and barrier property that can also be utilized but metal and uh, glasses are good among all but uh, again utilization because of their uh, price and uh, bulkiness are not uh, that's why industry trying to utilize another packaging uh, in in place of metal as well as glasses Yes. Uh, what about the cost? Active packaging is not cost effective. We may lose huge huge business in some categories of customer. Yeah, of course. Actually, uh, active packaging. We need to think about uh, the price of the product. Active ingredient. If we are adding uh, in a in a large scale, obviously it will increase uh, add the cost. But uh, we can do in a small way like. Uh, I, I can give you an example. Uh, you are uh, purchasing some uh, leather bag or shoes. You are getting small sachets of the silica gel. So it is very uh, simple and that can, we can't say that is at the cost, but it helps to protect. So if shelf life protection is important, uh, then, and uh, if large scale, like initially packaging was also costly unnecessary industry want to pack the product and that increase the cost so if in a large scale they are using and some research are also like there are some films also which are act as an active film so customer don't want to uh, worry about that but uh, but obviously cost will increase but if we are considering the safety aspect it is important and uh, if it if our business is a large scale and we can multiply that so it will not i think uh, it compensate with the cost and uh, the people are ready to pay for the quality that i can add here yeah. thank you ma'am okay another question is which type of food pro products can be packed in bioplastic films yeah any type of product we can pack uh, there is but if we are considering bioplastic liquids are not that much uh, practically applicable uh, uh, though they are packing with the some of the studies are there they are packing oils uh, and some uh, milk product also but uh, bakery items as well as uh, fruits and vegetable cut fruits and vegetable meat product they can be utilized uh, with the bioplastic film as a primary packaging material we can use Okay, sir. Dr. Mohan Kumar is asking, in your work sets are used to make the biodegradable packaging. Is there any specialty with the seeds, any special component in it? Yeah, of course. Uh, as we all know that seed are a uh, good source of protein. So protein is major compound uh, we used to target uh, for film forming. Although, but oil is not good. So that's why defatted meal uh, is uh, very important. That's why we are also focusing to utilize deep hatted mustard cake or soya bean, etc. that can be utilized in that way. Okay. Uh, what about the regulation regarding the incorporation of nanoparticles in packaging films? Uh, as such, uh, I could not find uh, uh, in our FSSI also, but uh, uh, I can't exactly say the limit, but uh, if it is not for your consumption, then it is uh, acceptable to utilize easily. Okay, sir. Uh, any other question from participants? We have discussed all the questions from chat box. 
so is there any question yeah but uh, many participant i ask very good questions uh, i need to uh, think about that some of the aspects as madam asked and uh, dr mohan i will definitely try to reply to them and thank you so much uh, thank you very much sir so and that means uh, questions you. and that means uh, based on questions all the particip uh, participants are interacting continuously they are listen all the lectures uh, by heart and you also answer them very uh, with with very high knowledge and uh, so it is i think uh, it, uh, it the session was very interactive too thank you so much sir uh, thank you so much for inviting and uh, happy to interact with you all uh, i think uh, some of the participant are my student uh, when i was uh, in maharashtra and uh, some friends also i can see so very uh, uh, very interesting for me to interact with you all and uh, thank you uh, to the shiva each, each one feel uh, proud that uh, you are from here but uh, referring at yeah. the central university so that way also they are uh, very much happy to see you there yes sir i am also glad to represent uh, you all here and <laughs> yes sir thank you thank you sir thank you sir thank you very much sir. yes thank you very much sir yeah so sir uh, when some more uh, fdp or such is mean one more time we will interact with sir thank you very much for sparing your time and giving such a uh, thorough knowledge to our participants thank you very much sir all yeah, the participants we will join by 12 noon okay Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, all participants. Thank Thanks. you for listening. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you very much. Yes. Bye. Bye.